In this video with the on King, I'm going to go over identifying program residency programs you want to apply to and then making connections with them. This whole networking thing that everybody always wants to do, but has no idea how to do. I'm going to go over all of that. If you want some individualized help, or if you just want to support us here, we've got lots of different social media and a Patreon, uh, this link here, if you want to get help, we also really appreciate your support by subscribing to our YouTube channel here. All right, the first step is that you need to identify programs. You need to identify what are the programs that I'm interested in that I'm going to target, um, and I'm gonna show you resources you can use to do that, as well as um, how to kind of organize all of that data. All right, here's a lot of resources I'm gonna show you that I used to make my list uh, when I was compiling and trying to figure out all the dermatology programs. If you're applying to internal medicine, this is gonna be more difficult because there's a lot more. Um, for dermatology, there's less, um, but I actually listed every single program and then went and did my research. Um, now here's my list, I use Notion, I'm a big fan of Notion. I created a database, you can do a spreadsheet, you can do a Word document, it doesn't matter. Um, but you can see I by state and name and I, I listed out basically every single dermatology program that there is and then all these details about them from Reddit, notes from people that I knew in my department, things like that. Uh, I'll go over this in a second. One thing you can use is this residency explorer tool. Uh, it's decent, it gives you some information. Uh, it's probably my favorite of all the tools I'm gonna show you that are kind of pre-made, but still not fantastic. Uh, I'll put the links for all these in the description, by the way. Uh, this is the Frida thing. It's pretty crappy. Um, I, I should I should be that mean. It's decent. But if you click on it, you really don't get that much information uh, about the program. So it gives you a list of programs, but not much more than that. There's the doximity things where you can look at like the rankings of the program. So you can sort by reputation. You could scroll down here. You can see here's a program where I matched, and I'll be uh, uh, for the next bit. But Really, it doesn't matter uh, where these rankings are because, for example, they don't even put Harvard in the top one. I've heard many people say Harvard's one. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I would not rely on this. I would not rely on the U.S. news and rankings. You can kind of use it to rule out bad programs and stuff, but I don't rely on that too much. And then there's these spreadsheets. And if you just Google, like for me, dermatology application spreadsheet reddit most of them are on reddit uh, you'll find things like this and there's tons of tabs and so this is 2018 to 2019 2019 to 2020 and then 2020 21 and there's one for this year as well going to 22 um, but you can see there's uh things like the interview impressions here there's away rotation impressions so i went through each of these and and found you know what are the positives and negatives of each of these programs i went through all of the years that I could find available. Uh, and then on my sheet, I, I wrote on the Derm Reddit. And so I wrote, you know, great family program, great all around. And you can see it's probably because uh, they hit, you know, there was very uh, good things here. <laughs> I talked about it being family friendly, which is great for me. So just knowing these things. Now, recognize that these spreadsheets are public and sometimes people intentionally try to trash that place because they want to rank it high and they don't want others to rank it high. Just realize that I did find many things where um, things said that, you know, it was great cosmetics or bad cosmetics, and that was the absolute opposite of what was true. Uh, also, realize things change you know, quickly. So, use this with a grain of salt, but it is a good place to start um, getting ideas. And it's where I kind of found, like, hey, I was kind of interested in this program, sort of a thing. One really good resource, if you have access to a fourth year that has ERAS application already, uh, they can go in and search programs by specialty. So I could search dermatology, uh, and then I can actually get a list of all of these. So I could go through and just print this website. Here's 100 and then go to the next page. I could print out this website, and that's a list of all uh, programs that are truly active. Uh, you know, so. That's where I would start with things. Um, and then once you have your list ready, uh, like I said, I just made it by state and name. I went through, I added all my notes here. I added my uh, other notes that I had. I, I had to do an intern year for dermatology, so I put that in. This is something I would do. I, I looked and saw where did University of Utah people match in the last couple of years. That means they're likely to take more University of Utah people. And, you know, how many spots are there? That's going to reflect how competitive it is. I did put the doximity rankings in here early on. Uh, that's not be that's because I didn't realize that they really aren't that great. Um, I've been interested in a Mohs fellowship, so looking at where there was a Mohs fellowship and how strong that program was for matching into that because that was something I was considering. Um, and I kind of talk uh, talk about you know Im identifying the important things to you. I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, contacts I had, and then this was more like when I was interviewing, I implemented all these other things. Uh, and you can see I actually used this database. If I open this up, 
uh, later on, customized my personal statement in here. Uh, and then um, everything here is like all the details I learned from the program uh, as I was interviewing there. So uh, I used this database quite a bit. So as I collected the state and name, then I made a new one uh, for pre-rankings. And uh, basically what I did is I said, you know, you know, you see on my home program. I did my away rotation at uh, OHSU. And then I, I played with this for quite a while before I decided that I was going to signal these three programs. Um, but I, I really thought about signaling quite a few of these other programs. And then I decided, uh, you know, which ones am I going to make in my top? And then I scroll down further, which ones I didn't want at all. Um, and it's funny because this list, uh, I, I learned later on that some of these programs I didn't even like think about very much are actually fantastic programs. And they ended up interviewing me for one reason or another. Um, but this is a great place to start. And you can see for my personal statements, I used this as a guide and I wrote personal statements um, for the top 30 or 40 programs. Um, and then I used my notes and stuff uh, to go beyond that. And then I used it when I was doing interviews and everything else. Like I said, you don't need to use Notion, but this is a great way to at least start organizing what are my options and then start putting in the pros and cons of those places and then connections for each of those. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, kind of building this list further uh, once you have it all organized. The next thing is you need to determine what is important to you. Um, you know, what do you care about in a residency program and, and where do you want to go? Uh, for some people, that's the prestige, but for most people, that's not true. I would say location, honestly, is a huge, huge portion uh, of where you want to go because you, you're going to be living there for quite a while. Um, the other thing is your family and, and having family support. Uh, where does your family want to live or where can you be close to family? Those are really, really important things that are going to uh, make you very happy. Uh, so I would definitely prioritize those um, that you can get really good training at most of these programs, even if it's not Harvard or Stanford. Um, the next thing is, do you want to go to an academic center? Do you want to go to a community center or something in between? Uh, those are good questions to be asking as you're looking at programs because the training is going to be very different depending on this. Uh, the next thing is how much do you care about uh, a fellowship? Uh, certain places are going to have really good lead-ins to fellowships, whereas others won't. Uh, for example, for me in dermatology, uh, dermatopathology and Mohs surgery are quite competitive. Uh, if you go into internal medicine, cardiology and GI are very competitive. And you want to go to places where you can get into that if that's your end goal. Uh, if that's not your end goal, then you won't uh, make an important. So kind of make a list of what are the important things, and then you can start researching that uh, as you go through everything. The next thing is you need to determine how competitive you are. Uh, one of the first things here is your location. Um, I, 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 West Coast places like West Coast. I think California is kind of notorious for only taking people from California. Uh, it's not necessarily true, but the, the high proportion there. Uh, the Northeast likes the Northeast. Um, so just realize that. Uh, the next thing is connections, both yourself or faculty members you've worked with and stuff. If you have a really strong connection to a place like Harvard, that might get you an interview. If you don't, it's going to be very difficult for you to get into these bigger schools. Um, so just recognize that in how, being how competitive you are. This is something that's unfortunate, but very true. Uh, whether you're an MD or a DO or an IMG is going to make a very big difference in how competitive you are for different programs, and it's definitely at different locations. Uh, I'll show you in a second here some uh, websites that kind of go over the things that will help you uh, realize how competitive you are, uh, particularly pertaining to this. Uh, this is an important thing that, uh, like I said, is unfortunate, but it's a reality and you need to realize it, um, and, and maybe even plan for a backup if you're not super competitive for a specialty. And then determining all the other things. What are your grades? Did you do a research year? Do you have AOA? You know, whatever. All of those things matter. Realizing how competitive you are for certain programs is going to help you target the right uh, programs, whether you need to go for mid-tier, whether you're comfortable going for high-tier, um, all of those things is going to be important. Like I said, unfortunately, this is an important thing. You have to consider how competitive and an applicant you are. Uh, this website here, I can link in the description, but this is where you can get lots of data tables from the NRMP. Um, but go down to the here with the charting outcomes of the match. I believe these come out every two years. And you can see there's outcomes for MD seniors, DO seniors, international medical graduates. And this is really where you're going to gather information. Uh, so I pulled this up. Uh, and this is for MD seniors. If I scroll down to a specialty... Uh, let's go anesthesiology here. You can look at this data and see, you know, how competitive is my step one score? I guess that's not important anymore, but how competitive is my step two score? How much research are people doing on average? And then you can go into more specific details here. You can see what's the probability of matching depending on how many interviews you have. So in anesthesia, you need to be getting around 9, 10, 11 interviews to guarantee a 90% match rate. Um, and you can see based off of the step one score, you know, 
people with a low score I struggle matching, whereas people with over 260, everybody matched. Uh, that'll help you know how competitive you are for more competitive programs and the specialty as a whole. Um, but realize that some things are changing. Anesthesia has gotten more competitive since 2020. Um, but you can see kind of how that works with uh, all of this information. And it goes further into research and whatever else. So use this is a really good resource to determine how competitive you are for a specialty. The next thing is making connections. And this is the networking, networking part that uh, everybody wants to know about. And there's a lot of ways to do it. I know I was told this all the time and I struggled with it. Uh, so I wanna give you the advice I've learned over the past couple of years. One way to make connections is through conferences. And recognize that as a medical student, your primary goal in going to that conference to present research is one, to get that research on your CV, and then two, to make connections. It is not important for you to go to those lectures and learn all of those things because you're not a resident yet. You're probably gonna forget a lot of those things, but you can make connections. And what I mean by this is, let's say you're really interested in a specific specialty uh, or, or like subspecialty within that specialty if you if you go to a conference and you realize somebody is at for example Wake Forest if you really want to go to Wake Forest and you realize that somebody at Wake Forest is doing all of their research in this specialty that you're very interested in find out when that person is presenting a poster or a talk or whatever and then go meet them find them uh, introduce yourself tell them why you're very interested in, in in that program and whatever showing your face and meeting them in person uh, is really really good uh, for networking so that's one way you can do it Another thing is shadowing your home rotations. Uh, I, I made a whole video on home and away rotations, and one thing I mentioned in that video is that as you're rotating with those people, ask all the people you're working with uh, where they have connections. Uh, do they know somebody at a certain program? Where would they recommend that you uh, try an interview, that you try and do away rotations, whatever. Knowing where all these connections are is really, really important. Another thing, doing away rotations is a great way to make connections, and it's a way that people uh, almost guarantee themselves interviews at certain places. So uh, it's definitely something to consider if you can afford it. Uh, and there's a whole video I have on away rotations that you can watch. And then getting residence numbers and calling people. And this is something I did uh, kind of leading up into the applications. I found a residence phone number at one school. They gave me three different residents at three different schools. I called all of them and just scheduled a quick 10 minute phone call where I could call and say, hey, you know, what's really cool about your program? I'm interested in living there. Uh, you know, tell me the goods and the bads. Uh, do you know anybody at any other programs you'd recommend? Uh, and you just kind of expand your network through this web that way. Uh, and that's a really important uh, part of identifying the programs that you're interested in. I was very interested in one program called and talked to a resident uh, and they convinced me that I, I, I really should not be interested in that program at all. So I ended up, uh, I was going to send them a preference signal and, and ended up not doing it because of that phone call with that resident. So I think doing all of your research up front and making these connections and talking with people about different programs is really going to help you in the long run. Uh, and then uh, in my video on personal statements, I talk about customizing the personal statements. This part here, when you make connections, you can actually write in your personal statement about so-and-so and how you want to work with them and their research and, and whatever it may be. So just realize that this is very, very important. Thanks for learning with The On King. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at On King Med. Also feel free to reach out via email or check out our website, onkingmed.com, for more tips and tricks.